Hey everyone, Paul from Hashtag Sports. So there's a lot of rumors going around right now about Zach Ertz becoming a Buffalo Bill, but there's a lot to unpack here. We've got uh, uh, draft picks that have yet to be signed. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, limited cap space as it is. The Bills really didn't address, address the position in the draft at all. They barely addressed the position in free agency. Uh, you've got a 31-year-old tight end who probably wants out of Philly at this point. I mean, there's a lot to unpack. So let's see if we can make Zach Ertz a Buffalo Bill. All right, so we're at one of my favorite resources, and that and that's overthecap.com. Uh, right now, they've calculated the Bills have about $4.8 million in salary cap space. Now, that number's important because the draft pool, right, was about $2.2 .2 million in available space they needed to sign players. So that still hasn't happened yet. Um, you've got a couple players that are under contract that were just drafted, uh, like Damar Hamlin is on there. Um, you know, uh, Wild Goose is on there. So you've got some players who are on their rookie deals, but they're below the top 51 contracts, which means those contracts don't count against the salary cap. So signing them today, tomorrow, a month from now really doesn't matter because they don't count towards the salary cap. Only the top 53 contracts do. Now, Zach Ertz right now is scheduled to make $8.5 million in base salary, and Philadelphia is 100% still shopping him. So the question becomes, well, how do you make that happen? Um, that's a tough sell, right? It's a real tough sell because, one, you need compensation to go to Philadelphia, and, two, you need to figure out a way to create some cap room, and how do you do that? Well, let's look at the highest offenders of Bill's Mafia, Mario Addison and A.J. Klein. Those are the two players we hear about all the time, so let's take a look at it. Mario Addison uh, recently restructured his deal, and let's talk about that restructure, okay? Yes, the 2022 year is now voided, so they actually removed a year from his contract. Uh, that is now a void year, and what that void does is it allows an extra year to kind of hide signing bonus money. So you don't have to pay for it now, but you'll have to pay for it in 2022. So what can you do about his contract okay well here's the long and short of it if you go through the text under contract notes you'll notice it says addison has a two million dollar salary guarantee that will vest to a full guarantee on the fifth day of the league year so that happened his base salary is guaranteed 4.075 million dollars is guaranteed you can't get rid of it it's a guaranteed listed salary um Addison will also receive an $800,000 roster bonus on the fifth day of the 2021 and 2022 league year. Um, now, obviously, he won't be on the team in 2022. Uh, that was changed to a voided year. But um, the guaranteed salary and that roster bonus have already been listed out as paid, quote-unquote paid. So what happens with the guaranteed salary? Well, it's guaranteed you got to pay for it at some point. Whether the player's on your team or not doesn't matter anymore. His base salary has been guaranteed. Um, so that full $4 million is now guaranteed. The question is, what are you going to do with it? Um, if you were to cut him right now, it would actually cost you about $500,000. So obviously Buffalo is not going to do that. Could you trade him? Well, let's scroll and see. <laughs> A 34-year-old defensive end? Yeah, there's nobody interested in that. Uh, if you were to cut him after June 1st, you still have to account for the signing bonus money that is prorated, the roster bonus, and that base salary, right? Because $800,000 of the roster bonus was already listed out as paid and guaranteed. So you you have to pay him and account for $6.7 million against the cap this year if you were to cut him. You're going to save $1.4 million. Now, money saved is money saved, so I'm not going to say that it isn't. But are you going to be able to cut Mario Addison and add Zach Ertz and have it be a fair swap? You're not. You can't. You just don't have enough space. Zach Ertz has an $8.5 million base salary. Um, even adding $1.4 million to the 4.8 that you have doesn't really get you there. So at face value, you're, you're not really there. Obata. Well, let's back up. Let's look at A.J. Klein, because A.J. Klein's another player, kind of a funky fit for Buffalo moving forward, a 30-year-old linebacker, and his deal is a little bit more complex, uh, a few more years left remaining on it. Uh, so he has a $4.1 million base salary, uh, and the signing bonus money is pretty low, which is great. When you have a low signing bonus, that means you can let the player go often without a lot of uh, repercussions on your salary cap. So $800,000 remaining through 2021 and 2022. That's great. Um, that's nice and low. You like that number. 
But if you start looking at the way his contract is structured, you'll notice that they built in guarantees. And those guarantees are going to guarantee a portion of his base salary. So let's look at the contract notes. Here's what it says. Klein will receive a $1.2 million signing bonus. That was when he signed the deal. And guaranteed salary for 2020. And a $3.1 million roster bonus uh, five days after contract execution. Okay, that's already been paid. No problem. $3.2 million of the 2021 salary is also guaranteed at signing. Whoa, okay, timeout, red flag. He's got a $4.1 million base salary. When he signed the deal, we guaranteed $3.2 million of that. So that only leaves $900,000 in non-guaranteed sign and non-guaranteed um, base salary. So much like Mario Addison, you see where this road is going, right? These deals on paper looked like you could move around in them. Unfortunately, there were a lot of automatic triggers in future guaranteed salaries. And that's what happens in the free agent market. You end up having to make longer commitments to players in guaranteed salaries. It's how you get most players here in the first place. You you know can offer them a three-year deal. Maybe the money's not great, but if it's mostly guaranteed, the player has leverage. They're less likely to get cut. And if they do, they're getting paid that money anyway. Well, that's kind of where we're sitting with, with AJ Klein, very similar to Mario Addison. Uh, Klein will earn a $1.6 million roster bonus on the fifth day of the league year. We're past that. Um, and a $700,000 roster bonus on the fifth day of the year, league year in 2022. So if we were to cut AJ Klein right now, you save $788,000. There's no way you're going to find a trade partner for him. If you were to cut him post June 1st, he's still going to cost you $5.2 million against salary cap, which is better than the six point, almost $6.4 million that he costs you now, but you're only going to save $1.188 million. So again, we're talking peanuts when you're looking at total cap space. These deals are not really movable. Um, so the question becomes, all right, well, you might, you're going to have to cut one of these players to make room for Zach Ertz um, or Jordan Hicks, the linebacker from Arizona. He's on the table right now. Arizona's looking to get out of that deal. Um, so, I, again, A.J. Klein versus Jordan Hicks. I'd rather have Jordan Hicks. But at the cost, uh, it's probably a little cost prohibitive at this point. Um you could you could snatch him, but uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, so how do you acquire Zach Ertz? Well, you don't have any cap space really to do it. So let's take a look at what his current contract structure is. Because remember, when you trade a player, you're acquiring their contract. So what does that actually look like? Here's the deal. He's got two voided years that started in 2022 and 2023. That's a really big deal. Those voided years uh, mean that he's on a one-year deal. This is the last year of his contract. It's a one-year deal. So how are you going to sneak through that? How are you going to make it through that? Well, that's where the conversation gets kind of interesting because if you're looking into how to acquire Zach Ertz, First off, you can do it for basically peanuts. I think Philadelphia is just happy to get the contract off their books. If they do trade him before June, they save $7.7 .7 million. I'm sorry, they save $4.9 million. He's still going to count 7.7 .7 mil against their cap, but at this point, whatever, right? If they trade him after June 1st, yes, they do save more money this year. It does force additional dollars into, into the next year, but I don't really think Philly cares too much about that. A post-June 1st trade means that he's only going to count $4.2 million against your salary cap. $8.5 million, the full base salary, uh, would become the next team's problem. So how do you get that done? Well, it gets a little complicated, right? First off, you don't want to take money away from Zacherts. That's kind of punitive. You don't. You really want to try to avoid that if you can. So the whole goal is to structure a deal for him that gets him the $8.5 million that he would make but also gives him a contract extension to where his number is a little bit more affordable. So how do you do that? So first off, let's just, for argument's sake, let's just make his base salary for 2021 $2 million. So we're going to take this $8.5 million base salary, and we're going to make that $2 million. Let, we got to change up the way that we're talking about this a little bit, because when we start talking about numbers, I think we could get, quickly get lost. Okay. So the goal here is to make Zach Ertz's salary 8 Point five million dollars. Okay, there we go. 
we need to get him to $8.5 million in money this year. It's the only way that really he would be interested in an extension. I'm sure he's not interested in a pay cut. So realistically, we need this to be a three-year deal. Now, mind you, that's going to take you into years. Uh, let's see here. Let's go age. That means it'd be 31, 32, and 33. Let's talk about years. This would be 2021, 2022, and 2023. Okay. So how do we get this money done? Well, first off, if you give Zach Ertz, because he was making uh, uh, $8.5 million, okay? Let's get, oh, geez, Paul. Let's spell correctly first. There we go. Um, let's say we're going to give him a signing bonus and a base salary. Okay, let's make his base salary $2 million. That's $200,000. Let's make his base salary $2 million. Okay, now why do you make the base salary $2 million? Well, first off, it's digestible under the money that you have available right now. Second, you're going to prorate that signing bonus. So you need to get him to $8.5 million. Well, if you're going to give him $2 million in base salary, that means $6.5 million is the amount of money that you would be able to give him in a signing bonus. Okay, so we take that $6.5 million and that gets divided evenly among three years. That means two, one, six, yeah. That means $2.16 million is going to be the amount of money that Zach Ertz is going to cost you against the cap each year, minimum, right? So we've got a $2 million base salary here. Uh, we'll just increase that to uh, $3.5 million the following season. Just make our math a little easy. We'll do the same thing for the following year. Okay, so what does that bring our cap number to? Well, that brings our salary cap number to $4.16 million and then $5.6 million the following two seasons. Now, why is that number great? Well, first off, it really gets you to where Zach Ertz should be. Zach Ertz is probably a $5 million player, between $4.5 and $5 million. Uh, 8.5 is just simply way too high. He's past the peak years of production. So if you're gonna add somebody, you kinda have to add him at value, and your value is different than other teams. Now, you can get him the $8.5 million if you want, but his subsequent seasons are gonna come at less and less money. Now, does Zach Ertz think he'll get more money on the free agent market? I mean, if he doesn't land in the right spot this year, he's going to be getting near base minimum um, in following seasons. There's just no way around that. Last year was a disaster for him. Um, while he has been healthy throughout a majority of his career, the truth still remains that this is probably not the best look for him to land someplace where he's not going to be able to establish value. Now, assigning a three-year extension establishing value sure isn't. But I think the free agent market is so volatile, a trade is really the best interest for him. And Buffalo can give up near nothing. We're talking fifth, sixth, seventh round picks for Zach Ertz. We're, we're not talking anything above that. So with that all being said, is it possible for Buffalo to go out and acquire Zach Ertz with just the contract space they have available, cutting nobody? Yeah. Would it be easier if you let Mario Addison go as a post-June 1st cut? Sure, you save money that way. AJ Klein? Yeah, you save money that way too. Both of those allow you the 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 um, physical ability to go get him and still sign your draft picks. Now, there is going to need to be a little bit of roster management along the way, and Bean really hates cutting things this close. But the money's there to do it if you wanted to. Yes, you can give him the money that he's making right now. Yes, you can give him a contract extension. Is it the greatest thing in the world? No, but he's a $5 million player at this point. So I don't think Buffalo should buck off of that thought process. If this offer was on the table and Zach Ertz were to accept it, you really have to consider this as a very viable option for Buffalo. Can you get him down to $4.16 million? Sure can. It's pretty simple. You get him down where his value truly is because right now he's overpaid based on his age and the production from last season, uh, given the injury history. Big red flags. But can you do it? You can do it. Paul from Hashtag, guys. Have a good one.